in that regard, do you leave out some of this graveyard? Like, if you're going to board and rest in peace, do you also keep all the surgicals, logic I knots? I actually would bring in surgical, not rest in peace. Uh, because it's the matchup, specifically the way we see Caleb Shear play it with the four pieces of the puzzle sideboard, Caleb doesn't need his graveyard to win the game. So just shutting off graveyards. It has significant cost for Philip Lawrence deck. He's also a Snapcaster mage deck. You want to have access to things yeah. like Snapcast for your Dispel or your Spell Snare. That can be pretty important for you. And Surgical, if Shear exposes a Grape Shot, that significantly diminishes his ability to win the game. He be on Empty the Warrens, and you're a deck that has access to multiple sweepers. Lauren going to take a mulligan. We'll see if Caleb follows. Yeah, definitely don't like to mulligan in a matchup like this. Uh, in general, Azorius Control is very much a deck that is just trying to commit game actions. They're just looking for lands and spells type hands. In all your matchups, it's important for you to hit land drops, and this is one where it's very important to have counter spells early and the right kind of counter spells. Caleb has kept on seven as Lauren surveys his six card hand. It looks like he will keep and scry to the bottom. No copies of Search for Escanta in Azorius Control today. Mo Very few two-for-ones here. It's one hieroglyphic, no search. Otherwise, we're not really looking at draw spells. I yeah, guess he's opted for three Ancestral Vision. Okay, so he's got th he's going for that type of draw spell. Obviously. Right. And you're absolutely right in that it will be the turn one play as he suspends it. And this is a matchup where there's no legal card where Sheer's going to be looking at Lauren's hand. So once there's blue mana available, Sheer just kind of has to respect counter spells to the extent that he can beat them. And that's going to make it so there's some tension between casting yeah. into open mana and letting the Ancestral Vision come off suspend. Well, that's the interesting part, right? Caleb is on the draw. Philip is down a card for the Vision, and he's down a card for the Mulligan. So Caleb's up three. If he can try to execute a combo turn before this Ancestral Vision comes off, he's really interested in doing that. Right. And yeah, because of that, there is a lot of pressure for Lauren to have counter spells to back up the Ancestral Vision, something like Negate Logic Knot. So he'll be playing Seer Visions here, which gives him more looks at that sort of thing. That said, I don't... Caleb, a double scry to the bottom on the Seer Visions. I think he's still looking for the second land right now. Yeah, he put some good ones on the bottom. I think it was a Pieces of the Puzzle and Empty the Warrens. And one top, one bottom for Lauren here. Another Serum Visions in Caleb's hand. It's unfortunate he's having going to have to spend these cantrips to just fix his mana. But here we go. Steam Vents was drawn. Now Caleb, is his deck's online, and he'll just go straight for Baral. I do like this. He could have used cantrips to try to get land drop three and four, but because of that timing pressure, he's going straight for the mana creature. Yeah, and he's playing against Azorius Control, not Jeskai, which means answers to it tend to be Path to Exile. You're pretty happy with that exchange. You also know that Lauren, he's only playing one Spell Snare, but getting your Baral hit by Spell Snare yeah. is a huge loss. So Lauren had the mana down. It was a good window for Baral. There is one oust in Lauren's list. I don't know if it's there post-board. It'd yeah. be a clean answer if he had one. I would assume not. And here's the Path to Exile. Upkeep, he'll go for the Baral. If it was, uh, yeah, might have seen Caleb try to convert some instants there. Instead, he'll just accept the extra land. And this is neat. The Ancestral Visions is on two, so Caleb will get one turn with this island advantage. Right. Ideally, for Lauren, he'll have at least one counterspell up on this turn. If he has a Cryptic Command, this means he has a shot at having a fourth land and leaving that one up. Though frequently, that is too inefficient to interact in this matchup. Tons of cantrips available to Caleb Shear. Yeah, draw, drew an island that turn. Interested to see what he wants to do with this. He has pieces of the puzzle. It would really load up his hand to cast it. If he just wants more lands, he may go for cantrips instead. Well, I think it's more the issue that he has something like three or four one-mana blue cantrips in his hand. Okay. And he would rather just turn those all into things like rituals, where the pieces can find him two cards, but then he's left with his hand that has all these cantrips. He wants to get these out of the way turn them into something good. Caleb turns the first cantrip into a grape shot. Second one is opt. Keeps that on top, turns into another grape shot. Third cantrip is serum visions. 
the multiple grape shot setup makes it uh, look like something where he can start to win just out of his hand. Sam Visions finds land five, and this scry of the top two is a desperate ritual, and I think a mana morphos. Yes, I believe that's the combination. That's a it's a nice if, combination. If that's true, this hand of land five, ritual, ritual, mana morphos, two grape shots. There is a lot to like here. Yes. Can you get the question I would have though is can you get all the way to nineteen? You know, Philip hasn't done hasn't helped you much on the damage front. Right. And he'll pass. It looks like the top was for Manamorphos, though I don't believe Desperate Ritual was put there. Yeah. Manamorphos is just kind of always good to have, whereas the yeah. ritual without a mana creature, also without a past in flames hanging out, that, that card's of questionable quality. The deck's also very very full of that kind of effect, and he still has some cantrips, so if he wants some rituals, he'll be able to find them. Fourth land by Phil. Cryptic up four mana. Next, he's hoping to survive to that Ancestral Visions, and we'll see if he gets to. Caleb's fourth turn here. He has land five. That's some acceleration, thanks to Path to Exile. Draws the mana Morphos he knew about. He'll start with Opt. Storm is at one. We haven't reached for the counters yet. <laughs> he should be able to remember a one. Now there's an empty the Warrens he picked up there. That's something, if I'm in Caleb's position, I'm pretty interested in using. That is quite tempting. You can see Caleb same way. He's going to go for the Mana Morphos. Storm is at two. See if Phil, uh, Philip interacts here. N not yet. I think if you have a spell snare, you fire it off there. And is it just empty for six from Shear? It is. Lauren's going to check the hand. He's got a play against for some of it. He's thinking about counter draw on one copy. Okay. So four goblins. Counter draw from Philip, and he will restock the hand here with that Ancestral Visions coming off suspend. So this is a big play. Caleb did not use that many resources for these four goblins, but it's also the case that the four goblins don't necessarily amount to much. So, refill of the hand for Phil Plorin. Plays land five, and he goes back to the draw-go gameplay. He'll pass. Back to Caleb we go. Great. Looks like Manamorphos was the pickup, and he swings for four. Snapcaster Mage into play for Lauren. It's going to block a goblin token. We'll see what it targets. Looks like he has Path to Exile. I think he's Path his own Snapcaster Mage. I guess you can just will. take care of a goblin. No, he took, okay, Path away a goblin. Um, it's possible that he just doesn't really have many or any sweepers in his deck post sideboard. It's a okay. little bit easier to justify when you have engineered explosives in your sideboard, which he does not have. So he'd be looking at things... Like, uh, he has three main deck Terminus and one Supreme Verdict, which can be a little bit unwieldy. Yeah. Takes a hit of two. Okay, Thank you. getting that sixth land here. Checking out the basics here. Looks like we have four islands, one mountain, so plenty of path targets left. Right. I'm kind of wondering when I, when I look at this, with that aggressive path to exile and the goblin token, when Caleb's very capable of just grape shotting for lethal out of hand, yeah. what Lauren's actual plan is for empty? Maybe he boarded in his Baneslayer Angel and his Lyra Dawnbringer? I like this play from Caleb. He's starting with Death's, with Pyretic Ritual, and that's because Storm's already at three thanks to pa Snapcaster Mage and Path to Exile. Yeah, and he's just had two grape shots in his hand, right? Yeah. Manamorphos is the fourth spell of the turn. Caleb going to make two blue. Fifth spell. Yeah, has to draw off the Manamorphos. Draws a second piece of the puzzle. And with so much reloading potential, he just feels free to go for these plays. We see Sleight of Hand from Sheer. And Empty the Warrens was taken and a Shivan Reef bottomed. I don't know if he wants to empty your Grape Shot, though. He's been setting up like he wants to Grape Shot. Uh, 
If that was the plan, he wanted to find something like a Desperate Ritual or a Manamorphose when he was casting those cantrips. Yeah. He gets another look if he has another uh, blue cantrip to fire off. Though with the way that Lauren played that, that Snapcaster Mage path, it makes this Empty the Warrens very inviting, and that's what he goes for. Yeah, and here is Empty. This is Empty to make 12 goblins. It's not the double grape shot win that Caleb was hoping for. And what it'll mean is that he'll have a fairly lethal board, but it'll be soft to a sweeper. Right. And Lauren's really not playing like that's his plan. Uh, maybe yeah. he has a Supreme Verdict in, but he does not seem thrilled about Goblin Tokens. Yeah, he has Logic Knot and Mana Leak, but at this point, what's the point in casting any of them? You're either you're going to sweep these Goblins or you won't. Right. If you sweep the goblins, might as well have a lot of counter spells left. Yeah, the counter draw on one empty earlier was more a yeah. situation where it was not that many goblins, and drawing the card was impactful. Opt from Philip Lorne. Has he kept a terminus in? Maybe. Not here, though. And this means it's a total of 14 goblins in play from Sheer. It's more or less a lethal swing. It would put Philip Lorne to two, but then Caleb has two grape shots in hand. And Lauren does have the sweeper. He casts Terminus here. Supreme Verdict. He played it like it was there a miracle. Go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Supreme Verdict. <laughs> it was off the top. Right. And back to Caleb we go. Pieces of the puzzle. A lot of resources were expended there for Caleb, but he has the ability to reload. And we have pieces here with enough to pay for Mana Leak. Yeah, it's a four-card hand with uh, pieces of the puzzle on the stack, so I think he's still in a fine position. Wipe away. And that's a sideboard Ignite Memories. Yeah, Caleb and Paul were talking about having this card <laughs> in their deck because they're tired of having all their win conditions surgical extraction. And this is a matchup where Ignite Memories can be good for a lot of damage. And he'll go for a second piece of the puzzle. Philip will mana leak that one. This one. Player reveals a card at random from their hand and take damage equal to the converted mana cost. Storm. Yeah, it, it's good, right? Now, Philip gets empty handed. This doesn't do anything. Yeah, though, uh, Phillip's empty-handed, you can probably kill your opponent somehow. Yeah, probably. I guess that's, the, right? Yeah. If your blue control opponent has no cards left. You're doing all right. Yeah, Ignite Memories is one that uh, I think it really has only ever seen play in Time Spiral Standard. Yeah, there was the Storage Land Storm deck. Dragon Storm. Yeah. On Phillip's side, it looks like we have two lands, Logic Knot, and then a white card in hand. With not much to do, I think we're just going to see a Colonnade swing on in for four. I was hoping that was Baneslayer Angel, but yeah, that's a Colonnade hit. You want to see a Baneslayer Angel get grape shotted? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> Six cards in hand for Caleb. Only facing down two mana. It's one counter spell represented. Can he put it together enough damage? Phil Lip Lauren is at 16. Recently swept away those goblin tokens, so Caleb has two grape shots to get the job done. And an ignite memories. Yes. Six lands to work with. There was a turn a while back where he scried a desperate ritual to the bottom. And based off of how some of these combo turns have gone, that turn where he went for the empty, that extra ritual and extra mana could have been very beneficial in converting these grape shots into a win. So Caleb just says go. We go back to Lauren, he hits again with the colonnade, makes another colonnade. And just passes. Caleb looking for more cards. Every card that's a ritual is more burn. And he drew mana Morphos, and it's time. Here's Desperate Ritual. That is a great draw. Three mana off the Pyretic Ritual. Caleb Storm is at one, three red mana. Desperate Ritual, up to four red. Three cards in hand for Philip Lauren. Logic Knot, Land, and I'm not sure on the third one. Well, it's unlikely it's something that combines with Logic Knot. Could yeah. specifically be Surgical Extraction, though with what's exposed, I don't think that that's really something that comes into play. The question I have is whether or not it's a land. Because if it's a land, then this Ignite Memories doesn't do anything. And Caleb has a big pickup here. It was his one of Remand. That's going to play really well on this board. Yeah, he's got a ton of mana to work with here, so he can have yeah. three Grape Shots uh, 
Poppy's got enough here. Looks like there is nine mana available. Yeah, Storm is at four. So a grape shot would, would take be... a tenth mana to do all three. Right. Well, there is a logic not to counter the remand. Oh, right. I guess it's only it's grape shot, grape shot, remand, that's six, and then grape shot is eight, but yeah, the logic knot would cover that. So it looks like what he's going to do is for his fifth spell here, is he going to ignite memories? He is. Storm is at five, so five copies of ignite memories. Logic knot in Philip's hand. If those are two says, lands, Let's do then it. you would just logic knot one copy. So that just adds to Storm for these grape shots, and Caleb has mana left over. Yep, Storm is at six. It's going to counter one, two... Three. It only counters one copy. Right. So four copies will resolve? Yeah. If it's just two lands, I expect Lauren just to show them. And Caleb needs to know whether he's copying a storm, counting a storm copy or the original. That actually matters because of Caleb's remand. Yeah. And uh, really, I think Sheer is just going to remand the Logic Knot because that's a spell. Oh, he passed on that. And I think that kind of cost him. These Ignite Marimarines could have been worth a bunch of chip shots. He can cast two Grape Shots. It's for seven, then eight. So that, that's one point shy. Oh, that's so awkward. Both cards were zeros. Yeah. It, it, it's not ideal to remand the Logic Knot there. So you would have had your six. Or it, I guess it's five memories. The Logic Knot was the six spell. So that, I guess that doesn't necessarily do too yeah. much or even any damage. Caleb is one short at the moment. He only has two Grape Shots in his list. He can't cast both of these for, for seven and eight. He has to do better. He can just Grape Shot, Remand, Grape Shot, and then hope to draw something and set up for next turn. He knows that Lauren's on lands. He I, knows he's not dead to Colonnade. I think that's all he can do here. I mean, Wait, it stinks. Is, does, does Lauren have two colonnades? He does. He can't fire them both up. Well, does, does, does one more land get him there? No, he okay. needs he's, he he's needs shy. a lot more. He needs okay. plenty more. And I, I think Grape Shot, Reman the Grape Shot is the play. Yeah, this Grape Shot is for seven. And that is the play. He'll remand his own Grape Shot back. So six of them come in, and Philip will go to ten. Caleb drawing a card draws Pyretic Ritual. So we're looking at two and three, so it's six damage for next turn. He needs to do better, and he only has one turn to do it. He's going to have to draw a blue cantrip. Or a Manamorphose. Yeah, some cantrip, right? right? He needs to... So right now they're at two and three. He needs them to be at five and six? Right. It's a lot to ask to ferry the draw for Philip. Does he care? Does he even cast this, or does he just hit with Colonnade? He had to find something very specific for the Teferi to be any good. I think you just hit with Colonnade plan for the win next turn. Yeah, I hope there's no Ignite Memories this time around. Lauren will Field of Ruin. And starting on the Field of Ruin, I guess I would expect that to mean you're... I guess the Teferi gets you two mana back. So he's tapping five. What's it going to be, the Planeswalker or the attack? There's it's the, the attack. attack. Caleb needs a lot of help here. He's got one draw step. And Goblin Electromancer. Electromancer. And Caleb doesn't do have it. it, so Philip Lauren takes the game and the match. Two games to one. Azorius Control moves on to the semis. Caleb Shear, another top eight, uh, even...